Hello, I'm Ed Ionides. Welcome to my course analysis of time series. This is chapter one, introduction. And in part one of chapter one, we're going to give an overview. We're going to start going through our first little data analysis. Okay, so the objectives for this chapter are to discuss basic motivations for the topic of time series analysis and to start introducing some fundamental concepts for time series analysis, such as stationarity, autocorrelation, autoaggressive models, moving average models, autoaggressive moving average models, state space models. Um, and these things will be covered in more detail later. We're also going to start introducing the computational tools that we'll be using um, subsequently in the course. So what are time series data? Well, they're simply data collected at many different times. And this is a common type of data because many um, experiments, observations happen through time. And the characteristic feature is that observations at similar time points are often more similar than more distant observations. And this has a consequence that it immediately forces us to think beyond the independent identically distributed assumptions fundamental to much basic statistical theory and practice. And so time series is for many of us, the, the first time we encounter more complicated dependent structures and it could get further complicated such as space, space time, networks with many social economic communication applications um, but you've got to start somewhere and um, very often first courses in statistics limit themselves to, um, to independence assumptions. So this course splits into two halves. In the first half of the course, we look at um, some fundamental tasks to do with time series. We want to quantify dependence in time series data and we want to find statistical arguments for the presence or absence of associations that are valid in situations with dependence. And um, one of the examples we'll be following is, does Michigan show evidence for global warming? Does Michigan follow global trends? Is there evidence for regional variation? What's a good prediction interval for weather? Um, those, are, those are kind of time series questions because weather evolves with time. The second half of this course focuses on uh, modeling and statistical inference for dynamic systems. We want to build models for dynamic systems and the models may be linear and Gaussian or they may be nonlinear, non-Gaussian. And then we want to use time series data to carry out statistical inference on these models. And we'll look at various questions in um, finance, economics, epidemiology, ecology, but one, uh, one example question is, can we develop a better model for understanding variability of financial markets, which is known in finance as volatility? And if we build a model that we think is promising, how do we assess our model and decide whether it is indeed an improvement? Okay, to get started with some data, let's look at some data on winter in Michigan. So there's a temptation to attribute a warm winter to global warming. And then uh, when you have a cold winter, it becomes hard to explain. Um, so it's interesting whether um, a trend is in fact noticeable at individual locations in the presence of variability, or is this um, global phenomenon of warming really hard to understand locally because of the um, higher variability year to year. Anyway, let's look at some data. This is downloaded from uh, www.usclimatedata.com. It's put in a file annarborweather.csv on the course repository on GitHub. And you can follow the link, go there and grab it from GitHub. But even better is to make a local clone of the Git repository. And then you can keep pulling automatically um, any changes to the course and automatically all the data notes, course, um, homework problems and homework solutions um, will appear on your computer. And that's, a, um, I, I, I recommend if, well, if you know Git and you're familiar with GitHub, 
that's good. If you don't, it might well be worth learning even for this course. Another computational tool that I'll mention is R Markdown and Knitter, which some of you will be familiar with, probably more with R Markdown than Knitter, but these are two techniques that combine source code with text to generate statistical analysis that's reproducible and easily modified and extended. These are both really um, good things for uh, developing statistical research projects. They're also, for similar reasons, useful for teaching and learning, since they make it easy for you to replicate and adapt analysis presented in class. So uh, my notes are in NITA. Um, some of the other materials will be in R Markdown. NITA is superior to R Markdown for producing um, PDF via LaTeX. That's why um, the notes and slides are in NITA. R Markdown naturally produces HTML, which um, can be good for kind of quicker analysis, but isn't so good for more polished presentations. Okay, so to get a first look at our data set, um, STR summarizes its structure. And here you can see that uh, I could have mentioned on the previous slide, this these notes are in um, NITA. You can pull the source code down from the um, down from the GitHub site and get a head start on um, using NITA yourself if you want to. So STR gives the structure. STRY we see it's a data frame, uh, 120 years, 12 variables such as year, low temperature. This is generally low temperature in Fahrenheit, um, high temperature, and so on. We're going to focus on low, the low temperature in Fahrenheit for January. Okay, so um, the um, we we want uh, an estimate of the low temperature. We also want to know the its statistical error, the uncertainty. And um, so if the data are written as Y1 star through Yn star, or we can also write that as Y star sub one through N, then basic estimates of the mean and standard deviation are mu one hat is just the straight um, sample average Sigma one hat is just the standard estimator of the standard deviation of um, the standard error on the mean. And then that gives us a kind of um, well-known approximate confidence interval for mu, which is mu one hat plus or minus 1.96 sigma hat divided by square root n. And um, little exercise to check the assumptions behind this confidence interval. Um, this, this will probably be familiar from introductory statistics courses. So uh, uh, assumption is that um, 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 Data are drawn as IID random variables um, with some mean mu and variant sigma squared, and then we either need a normal distribution. or a central limit theorem. Right, so, so if n is large enough and the distribution is not too far from normal, then the average is going to be very close to normal. Okay, so th that's, a, um, that's a fairly standard set of, of assumptions from classical statistics. 
If we want to compute this in R, we immediately hit a little complication that 1955 has missing data um, coded as NA. So we need to tell R to remove the missing data. And um, here's the code to do that. You use the NA.RM equals true flag for mean and SD. And so, well, this will give us the sample mean stump, sample standard error um, on the mean. And this is a question that as a statistician you might encounter. You have to give an uncertainty estimate on the mean. Is it reasonable to present the confidence interval minus 2.93 plus or minus 1.34? If not, what do you do? Well, um, we we um, we probably want to check the um, assumptions. Um, we should check the assumptions uh, behind. this confidence interval. Um, um, at the least, we should say that this confidence interval depends on these assumptions. But we really have some responsibility as well to just talk about how good these assumptions are in this particular case. So what do we do? Well, the very first step usually in time series analysis is to plot the data uh, as a time plot. You can also plot it in any other way that you think might be insightful. And in general, the more plots you do, the better. So here is um, a time plot just done using the R command plot. And it's, um, I've used type equals line because um, um, usually um, we connect points um, for time series. I guess it's, it's often just um, a clearer thing to do. So you can see uh, you can see what happens in the plot. There's a missing value. Here's the missing value. And you can also start seeing things in the plot. Maybe there's maybe there's a um, slowly slowly varying mean. I'm going to put a question mark because we don't quite know if, um, or is this just random variation? Um, and then another thing that, you know, we might be um, maybe Um, maybe close data points are more similar. I'm putting question marks on these things because you know we'll see in this course it's easy to see patterns in white noise and it's not it's not obvious whether these these patterns that we see are um, are real or imagined. Okay, so we're going to start um, looking at models for this, but that's going to be the next segment. And I will um, stop this for now.